the unboxing of the Warren winch. Pro Advantage. 2500. All right, so I already took the winch out of the box. Necessary kit to put it on the Grizzly 700. We'll get to that. I pre-wired a couple of things while I was waiting for the mounting kit. So let's get started. This is it. It's basically cost a hundred dollars. You do need these shorter wires. Hardware. Instructions. That's it. 100 bucks doesn't go far these days. The yellow and blue wires that come with the mounting, or sorry, with the winch, are too long unless you plan on hooking this baby up somewhere else other than close to the winch. So therefore, we use these two. Alright, well, let's get started. Okay, once you get all your parts out, make sure everything's here. Get your contactor mounted on the plate that came with the kit. 10 millimeter wrench, socket. We'll do the trick. So once you have it all mounted, it's time to put the winch on the plate. And this is the plate that came with the winch and I will be using it. And because I am using that, I will be required to use the two longer bolts that came with it, along with two shorter ones. You will end up with two shorter ones as extra if you do it the same way I did. and then torque them down to a specification. So once you've tightened all these up properly, move on to the next step. For me, it's finishing hooking these up. I've already pre-done these earlier while I was waiting for the kit to arrive. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I want to be careful not to over tighten because you won't want to break the studs that are attached to the contactor. That could cost. Next step is putting the fair lead on. It's a little tight, but um, a little patience and a little bit of wiggling, you'll get it on. So the nut is a little tight on the rear. That wasn't so bad. Okay, so at this point, before you get it on the quad, I have the fair lead on, not bolted tight, because I may have to adjust the alignment of it when it's on the ATV. Do not forget to take out the service bolt. Or screw, whatever. very easily forgotten about. Okay, let's go. Okay, I'm about to put the winch in. Just wanted to mention, I have pre-wired the power supply ahead of time. Because if you don't, you will find that you will need to hire some small kid get their hands in here to hook these up because there's not a lot of room in there after you have the winch installed. Best to slide the winch in, hook it up, then bolt your winch up. Time to bolt it up. Okay, just tightening up the last of the bolts. Little tip. When putting in, the tolerances are very tight. Don't tighten up any of the bolts until all the bolts are in and the nuts are in on the bottom. It'll make it a lot easier to get them in. If you tighten them up, you're just not going to get those bolts in very easily. Now I just need to align the fear lead and I'll tighten it up. Okay. Now that's done. Took the elastic band off. Put on a free spool, got it out a bit. Last step. Perfect. Time for the electrical. Okay, next you need your power source for your rocker switch. 
best thing to do is get yourself a voltmeter, find a power source that is only on when the key is on. You wouldn't want to accidentally drain your battery. Okay, once you finish all the wiring, tidy it all up, and then button it up. It's up to you where you want to choose where to locate your rocker switch. I'll show you where I located mine. I have located my rocker switch under the handlebars. I know some people put them on top, but if you were to roll it over, it would probably snap off. So underneath protects that. Let's see if it works. Well, thank you for watching my winch installation. Join us next week when we'll be riding on our new ITP tires.